This video is sponsored by none other than Squarespace, the best place to go when you want to get a domain or create a website or online store. Konnichiwa from Tokyo, but this video is about Scandinavia, so no more Japan stuff in this one. If you want to see what we get up to in Tokyo, go check out our vlogs from here over on our other channel. I'll put a link in the description. I asked you guys over on Instagram which videos you want me to make and this was one of the most popular ideas. Now all countries have their own weird customs and behaviors and Swedes definitely are no exception. I'm Swedish myself and a lot of these things I didn't realize were completely bonkers until I left and moved to another country. I thought this is just how people behave, it's human nature all over the world, but no. No, people do not behave like this everywhere. It's time to roast my own country people and call them out on their strange and embarrassing habits. Okay, okay, I'm one of them, so I'm gonna roast myself today as well. Let's do it. In Sweden, no one is ever better than anyone else. It's considered completely vulgar to brag about yourself or even slightly point out one of your good sides. If someone gives you a compliment, you can't say just thank you. Instead, you have to go like, oh no, not me, not at all, I'm not good at this at all. All this makes job interviews a kind of tricky business in Sweden. Swedish people's favorite word isn't about love or thank you or please or oh goody or something cute like that. Our favorite word is oi. We say it all the time, it means kinda like oops and wow combined. Oi, the short little ugly word is used instead of oh really and cool and even excuse me. Yep, if a Swedish person bumps into someone they will simply say a little oi. This got me into trouble when I moved to London and as a reflex went oi whenever I walked into someone. Because British people use the word oi too but there it has a not so nice meaning. Oi. I was the rudest Londoner until I got out of the habit of oying people on the street. You're not allowed to buy alcohol in the supermarket in Sweden. The only place you can get your drinks are at Systembolaget, a speciality shop that closes on 7 on weekdays, 3 on Saturdays and is closed on Sundays. The lines on Friday evenings and Saturday afternoons are ridiculous. When you're walking in the forest in Sweden, because everyone walks in the forest in my country, you wear rubber wellies. In those wellies you put crunchy crisp bread. Why? Because there are badgers in Sweden and an old myth is that when badgers bite you, they don't let go until they hear bones cracking. So naturally, you outsmart the badgers by putting crunchy bread in your boots that will crack, satisfying the badger and you can both leave the encounter completely satisfied. A big problem in Sweden is the boys in the north. Sweden is a very long country and up in the northern part it's cold, dark and gloomy. Beautiful, but oh man, the weather is tough. Also, there are no big cities and not as many work opportunities as in the southern parts, so a lot of Swedish girls have ambitions. They move south the day after graduation, trying their luck in Stockholm or Gothenburg, for example. The boys aren't as ambitious, staying behind. So there are actually whole villages in Sweden with very few young women, only a bunch of very lonely dudes. In Sweden, we don't like to stand out. It has to do with that whole you're not supposed to brag and think you're special kind of thing. So we like dressing the same. If you walk down the street in Stockholm, you'll be convinced that you're seeing the same few people over and over again. Nope, we're just all imitating each other. If you want to be cool in Sweden, you'll speak super cutely to strangers. Don't ask me why this is cool, but people go like, Hi sweetie, hey Gullet, hi Missy, no matter who you're talking to. Even the 56 year old bus driver with prison tattoos is in on it. We are an extremely reserved people. We do not like talking to strangers or even talking to acquaintances. We hate it when we see someone we know on the street because then we have to talk to them. <laughs> Before leaving the apartment, we look in the little peephole to make sure that no neighbor is out there waiting for the elevator. If there are someone there, we will wait for them to get into the elevator first and we get the next one. If you've ever heard a Swedish person's small talk, you'll understand why. Which brings me to... If you ask a Swedish person, hi, how are you? Don't expect to get a great, how are you back. Don't ask someone how they're doing in Sweden if you don't want to get depressed. We love to complain. We will tell you the gory details of our kid's ear infection, the horrible way our dentist messed up our tooth yesterday, how expensive everything has become, and how we've not been sleeping well lately. Again, it's all about not bragging about your life. Strange as it might sound, we trust society. We believe strangers are good people and we never ever expect to be hustled or tricked. It was a shock for me moving to London and realizing that I had to watch my back. My whole life up until then I'd just been a trusting person because in Sweden in general you really can be. 
To sound friendly, we like doubling up words to be cute. Hey hey, tack tack, mosh mosh, puss puss, tjena tjena, go kväll go kväll. See, it works. Cute and friendly. Again, no one is better than anyone else in Sweden, so we hate hierarchies. Your boss will always try to be just one of the guys, and you never use Mr. or Miss with anyone. We're all on first name basis. At uni, there are no Professor this or Doctor that, it's just John and Julia, which means I didn't even know who were professors or doctors or assistants or guest lecturers at my school. They were all just people. This isn't strange, it's hygienic people. Take off your bloody shoes, it's nasty having them on indoors. Barbaric. We are one of the, if not the, most coffee drinking people on earth, yet we don't have different kinds of coffee. It's all just a cup of coffee. And cup cafe. No macchiatos or ristrettos or avogatos or espressos, it's just coffee. With potor if you're lucky, which means a refill. Oh, there's one other type that all people drink, it's called cafe pofat, which means coffee on saucer. Yep, they pour some coffee onto their saucer, place a sugar cube in between their teeth and then slurp the coffee from the saucer through the sugar cube. Nasty stuff, but I used to love it as a kid though. We're a feminist people and it shows in our fashion. Women like to dress quite masculine because it makes us cool. Men get away with dressing hipstery, soft and cute because that makes them cool enough to be comfortable in their own masculinity. It makes for great people watching. The Swedish style is just mwah. The crossover between the kebab and the pizza, with iceberg, lettuce and everything. Oh, and sometimes the whole shebang gets covered with french fries just to get it all in there. A heart attack on a platter. In Sweden, we don't have places that only takes cash. We have places that don't take cash at all. The coins and bills are a thing of the past and everything is done electronically in Sweden. Very futuristic. So yes, Swedish people are f***ing weird. But I'm pretty sure you guys are just as weird, only in different ways. If you want to hear more about life in Scandinavia, David and I made a podcast episode about growing up in the north. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check it out. But now it is your turn to share with the rest of us the strangest bloody thing people in your country do. I've heard that Spanish people believe in the Christmas poop man, for example. Can you top that? Talk to you down in the comments. A big thank you to my lovely sponsor Squarespace. If anyone out there wants to create a beautiful blog or website, for example, you should definitely do it with Squarespace. Whenever someone asks me about getting a blog or a site or an online store, I always recommend them, especially if you want something simple to handle, but still modern and brilliant looking. And since it's an all-in-one platform, you can get a domain and beautiful templates to have fun with all in one place. They have 24-7 customer service, so there's always help to get you started and you don't have to learn any coding to create something that fits you and your aesthetic. I'm sure you will love this site just as much as I do, so what are you waiting for? Go get your free trial today at squarespace.com and use the offer code JennyMaster to get 10% off your first purchase. That's it, see you next week, hey do and puss puss! See, I did the double phrase there, puss puss, cute right? Here you go. Soy latte.